Okay, so we are ready to go. This is the Unit 5 seminar, and uh, in my opinion, it's one of the easiest units in the course, very straightforward, and there are two main formulas that you have to know for Unit 5. The first concept is the length of a line, length of a line segment. Um, hopefully you can see this. Distance or length is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's make this full screen so you can see it better. And let's just calibrate this quickly. Okay, so this is the formula that we're going to be using for the first part of the seminar. The second formula that we're going to be using is the midpoint formula. Now, whenever I refer to x1 and x2, I'm talking about the x1 refers to the x-coordinate of my first point, x2 refers to my uh, x-coordinate of the second point. For the midpoint formula, in order to get the midpoint of a line, you take your x1 and your x2 coordinates and you add them together and then divide by 2. y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is going to give you the midpoint, the y coordinate of your midpoint. So as long as you have a good grasp of both of these formulas, you will do very well in Unit 5. Now, in this guide, I am going to go through also some questions in the unit guide that typically students have trouble with. Okay, we're going to repeat these formulas, so don't worry if you didn't get to copy them all down. So these are the first two examples. Determine the length of the chord AB. So chord AB also can mean uh, the line segment AB. If I have a circle and A is over here, B is over here, the chord AB would be the line segment that is joining those two points. So the first thing I want you to do whenever you are um, finding the length of a line, take the two coordinates that you're working with and you're going to label. So my first uh, coordinate, I'm going to label that x1, y1. And for my second set of coordinates, x2, y2. So visually, this is going to help me when I have to plug these values in to my length of the line formula. So x2, my formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now you have to be very, very careful when you have two signs next to each other. I have a negative and a negative in this case. So I can simplify this even further. Negative 7 minus negative 1, that's the same as negative 7 plus 1 squared, plus negative 10 minus 5, that's negative 15 squared. Okay, so I want you to help me with my calculations for this particular question. So get your calculators out. Negative 7 plus 1, that's negative 6. What is negative 6 squared? Yes. Uh, you are right. Let's fix that quickly. Negative 2. Okay, so that means negative 7 plus that is the same as negative 5 squared plus negative 15 squared. Okay, so underneath the radical, you might call this the square root sign because we're going to be working with this concept a lot in grade 11. Get used to calling it the radical sign. So underneath the radical, I know that negative 5 squared is positive 25. What is negative 15 squared equal to? 225. 
So together, 25 plus 225 is the same as radical or the square root of 250. Now, if you left this answer like that on the test, you're not going to get full marks because this is not in simplified form. In order for it to be in simplified form, um, your number underneath the radical, you should have a number that you can't break up any uh, further. So you should have a number composed of prime numbers. However, for 250, how can I break up 250? What two numbers multiply to 250? Sunita, what did you find there? No? Okay, so 250 we can change to 10 times 25. So whenever you have a number, you want to start by breaking it up into two numbers that multiply to 250. And now it's very simple to break up the two numbers underneath my radical. How can I break up the number 10? What two numbers multiply to 10? 2 and 5. 2 times 5. And what two numbers multiply to 25? 5 times 5. Okay. Now I have prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that cannot be broken up any further. And more specifically, I have a pair of prime numbers here. Whenever you have a pair underneath the radical sign, you can take it on the outside. So radical 5 times radical 5 come together to give me the whole number 5. Okay, so we can take 1, 5, those two pairs turn into one whole number that we can take on the outside. And underneath the radical, because there are no more pairs, I can just multiply those numbers. 2 times 5 is 10. So square root of 250 simplifies to 5 root 10. Does everyone understand that? Okay, so always, I'm not going to spend too much time on the seminar for this concept, but always make sure that your radical or your square root numbers are um, simplified, completely simplified. Okay, for the next question, I have my chord 17Z3M. So let's write that point C. 